Burby or even some of those which have died. But now some of those which die can be made useful again because they're hollowing them out to allow animals and other things to live inside. One of those involved with this is Michael Sullings. He's a consulting arborist with Sydney Arbor Trees and he's on the line. Michael, good afternoon. Hi, Stuart. Thanks for having me. No, thank you. Where did this idea first come from? Um, I'm not sure exactly. I think it originated in Europe, but there's a couple of companies in Melbourne that have been putting it for Australian applications for about 10 years now. Right, right. And what's the idea behind it? You build these artificial hollows in dead trees, and, and what sort of animals tend to live in them then? Uh, well, there's a massive range of Australian vertebrate species use tree hollows during some point in their life cycle. Uh, as they estimate around about 15% of all Australian vertebrate species. Right, right. So birds, reptiles, and some amphibians. Yep. Uh, mammals, bats, yeah, there's a, a massive range. Right. And, and given the trees are dead, is there a problem with them, them still standing? Is, is there any issue with that once they've died? Uh, they uh, require monitoring over time, but we cut all the hazards out of the canopy. So we remove all the, any section that is likely to fail and fall to the ground, and we cut that out. So right, right. Cut it back to sound timber and then cut your hollow into the stem. Because how long would it take in, in nature for one of these hollows to actually form naturally in a tree? Oh, uh, well, at least decades. Right. Some, some research suggests centuries. Right. Uh, for, yeah. for a animal the size of a brush-style possum or a quoll or things like that, uh, yeah, it can take anywhere between 200 and 250 years, the research suggests, but... Obviously, we haven't been in Australia that long. So no, well, that's... Uh, that. What's the general oh, view of the industry, then, uh, in relation to, to dead trees? Um, well, that's what we're trying to get changed. We, well, we're trying to see a change in perception, anyway, of, rather than just viewing a tree, a dead tree, as an eyesore that needs to be removed for safety reasons and for sanitation reasons. We just, we'd like to see the arborists changing their the way they assess trees so that they can retain the parts that are useful for wildlife. Right. Because our tree population is dependent on our wildlife population. Yeah, okay, so yeah. What wildlife population keeps our trees healthy. Without, I... without, without them, our trees are suffering. We're seeing that in Western Sydney on the Cumberland Plain with all the grey box trees. Right, yeah. The small birds that keep their insects down in the upper canopies are no longer there because we've removed the understory. Right, right. And now the, the trees are declining and in a lot of instances dying because of the number of bugs. And so once you hollow out some of these dead trees, how long will they remain for? Um, well, again, we, we've been doing it for about 12 months, yeah. so we, we're a little light on information like that. But yeah, right. anecdotally, I grew up in the country, I yeah. know there's trees on my parents' property that were dead when I was born that are still standing. Yeah, right. So that's and so years. what sort of areas around Sydney have you done this where you've hollowed out some of these dead trees? Um, we've, we've done work or we have work coming up for eight different councils now. There's a lot on the lower north shore. Right. Uh, Inner West, Bankstown, um, and a couple of different organisations like the zoo. Yeah, and right, Sydney right. Sydney Olympic Park. Excellent. And so it gives the animals, in some cases, somewhere to, uh, to perch, others to socialise, some can even hunt from those areas. That's it. Yeah. That's the idea. Now, well, look, it's, it's very good. And as you say, with the Cumberland Plain, it's worth us thinking about with some of these dead trees. They're not necessarily just to be viewed as, a, as an eyesore. No, that's it. It's, and it, <clears throat> the, the little critters are the ones that are often, uh, the people don't think of, the yep. invertebrates that rely on dead timber for yes. their food, which form a... Uh, the, the lower levels of most food chains. So, yeah, right. So it's not just the big animals that are suffering, it's the whole ecosystem. Yeah. Well, mate, good, good luck with it. It's good chatting with you. Oh, thank you very much, Stuart. Yeah. All the best, mate. Oh, good on you. Thank uh, have you. a good afternoon. Michael Sullings, interesting consulting arborist with Sydney Arbor Trees. So you might often think, well, it's a dead one, knock it over, but as he says, he was growing up in the country. And often then you would find that uh, trees that were dead then are still standing as it is today but they can hollow them out and find places for other animals to thrive and prosper. Yes, Avril, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Stuart.